through the lot, now you know I'm coming through When the growth look good on you, best believe they wanna screw now I've been trying to climb, devil threw me in the dark Baby, don't be insecure, you can still go make a mark like Blow. Could never let them drain my soul now Blow. Table turning like doorknobs, wow Blow. I think I'm about to set sail I'm a walking living legend, walking with my chest now Life keeps dealing me cards, I keep feeling in love Yes, 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 people, it is G and we are back in the building you know what time it is you know what it is before we dive into the england review against wales please guys if you could if you could make sure you're liking make sure you're subscribing and make sure that you share this out with everybody that you know share it with your mama your mama's mama your mama's mama's mama as i always love to say now as you guys can see, obviously, scroll across the bottom. Um, we're on the road to 150 subscribers. I know I keep saying it in every single video, but, you know, that is just where we are at, at the moment. Hopefully, we're going to get there by the time we finish this World Cup. But, obviously, alas, we are here to talk about Wales versus England's uh, final group game for both teams. Um, both teams, obviously, headed into this game. Uh, England obviously were more or less assured of a place in the next round of the World Cup and Wales had their slim kind of possibility that they could potentially make it through very 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 slim but a chance nonetheless and obviously it panned out that England would as I said before the game um, go out there and get the victory that they deserved um, in the end. Um, so Obviously, looking at the game, um, you know, it's, you know, it was one of them kind of games, as I said, you know, um, pre-match, it was one of those kind of games where it started out how I thought it would start out a little bit slow and lethargic from England. As per usual, Wales were obviously, you know, in their setup, um, just making sure that they were keeping things tight and England were looking like they were just trying to find, you know, a uh, a way through, uh, looking like they were just trying to find uh, that possibility in order to, you know, break Wales down. And, you know, inevitably, it took a while. <laughs> you know, it took a long, long while. I think the first goal came in, I think it was like the 50, 50 or 55th minute or something like that. But, you know, nonetheless, you know, England were, you know, able to, you know, gain that victory. And, you know, when we, when we, when we look at the game, um, obviously, you look at the lineup and, you know, I'll put the lineup, you know, up here when we look at the lineup we can see that you know england were you know set up as we thought they would 4-3-3 um this one's a little bit different though if i'm being honest because what we were used to seeing in the previous games was yes it was a 4-3-3 but it was it um, i mean you know the game is the you know the game is the game at the end of the day so they're going to set up um in their kind of formation on the pitch obviously how sofa score or you know whatever app that you use to kind of uh look at these lineups you know it's going to show it a lot differently but when we look at the lineup here they've done it in a four three three but it was you know rice was the the genuine actual sitting midfielder i think that was probably more due to the fact that we had henderson in there um like i said before when you know uh he's putting henderson for mount in that midfield and i think when we had mount in that midfield for me personally the way that i was seeing the team kind of line up it did kind of remind me more of a yes 4-3-3 but in certain passages of play it was almost like a 4-2-3-1 you know with mount not really playing the 10 but as close as you can be to that position without actually being in that position you know, uh, Marcus Rashford obviously came in um, for Raheem Sterling. Uh, Phil Foden, you know, everyone was calling for him. He finally came in, obviously got himself a goal. Rashford with two. Um, the back four, the only change that was in there was Carl Walker had come in for Kieran Trippier. Um, obviously, a lot of talk in regards to that. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, Trent. And Trent did, you know, inevitably come on um, in the game. Uh, you know, l l later on in that second half and, you know, he's able to finally get his first minutes of the tournament. But I think when we look at, um, as they say, the elephant in the room, when we look at that right back slot, I think that we've got to be honest with ourselves. And, th and this is more, I guess, to like Liverpool fans in a general sense, because they're the only ones really 
complaining about this, to be honest with you. I, I think no one else is really talking about it. But when we look at that right back slot, ultimately we've we've got to say it, you know, if Reese James didn't get injured, then Trent probably wouldn't be in the team, so to speak. I don't think he would have got himself a call up. I think everyone else would have Ben White, Carl Walker, Kieran Trippier, and Reese James would have been the right backs. But I think it was either or, you know, obviously Reese James then, you know, unfortunately got himself injured. So once he did, I think then that decision for Gareth was kind of taken out of his hands and he kind of knew, well, I'm going to have to then bring in Trent Alexander Arnold, you know, to cover it in at right back. Yes, we know he's a creative abilities and things like that. I mean, he's got zero assists, I believe, you know, this season. Um, and with that kind of takes away, you know, what he actually is going to bring. Because if he's not bringing you the assists, which is obviously his main game, then you're going to have to start asking yourself, well, then what is he going to bring you? You know, because defensively, you know, in my personal opinion, you know, Kieran Trippier, Carl Walker, Ben White, they're all better defensively. They're, they're not that much better. I'm not going to sit here and say Trent is absolutely awful, so to speak. But, you know, he's had his moments, but I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far. And, you know, like I think it was uh, one of the uh, one of the presenters, ex-football players mentioned that he's kind of like a championship defender. I wouldn't go that far. But ultimately, these are better defenders it doesn't matter if it's just minuscule if it's by one percent you know these these things count you know in the long run and that's why i feel that we're not seeing trent and we're not going to see trent barring an injury or you know he maybe throws on every if we're losing a game you know in the in the next round potentially then he might decide yeah let me just throw everybody on and you know potentially just see you know what could happen um obviously luke shaw kept his place Maguire, stones Maguire. personally i think he's been probably England's best player um, in the group stages. I think that he has proven as to why he deserves to be in the England squad. Yes, his Manchester United form over the last eight, 12 to 18 months hasn't been good. And in that regard, if we're going by Southgate's logic, then yes, of course, he doesn't then deserve to actually be in the squad. But ultimately, when he does play for England, he does play, you know, really, really well. But, you know, we look at well set up in the last game against um, <clears throat> against Iran. They set up in a 3-4-3 formation. This time they've kind of, they've gone with a 4-2-3-1. Um, personally, you know, Gareth Bell's still there. Ramsey's still there. Um, you know, when when I watch Wales, you know, I mean, so, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, they haven't got that many talented players on the pitch. You know, they've got the one standout star, obviously, in Gareth Bell, Ramsey, obviously, Premier League proven um, and things like that. Dan James in there as well. Ampadu, Ben Davis, you know, Nico Williams. It, it's, it's one of it's one of those kind of things. Like, And I said it pre-match as well about Wales. I said you for me personally, I mean, they took Bell off anyway in the game. But for me personally, like, I just felt like if you were trying to get. If you're trying to win, I just feel Bell needs to not be on that right hand side because he doesn't offer you anything on that right hand side. He isn't going to track back. He isn't going to be able to get up as much as possible. I think they were be be better served putting him up front where Moore was instead and putting someone else up there. And, you know, they did bring on Brennan Johnson in the second half. And I thought like I felt like, why didn't you have him starting as opposed to coming off the bench and trying to potentially change things and, you know, you know, things of that kind of ilk with Dan James and Brennan Johnson on the wings. Maybe they could have caused England, you know, a bit more of a problem, so to speak. But, you know, ultimately, you know, that didn't happen. Um, England, you know, in the end, it was, you know, ended up being a comfortable victory. Marcus Rashford with a free kick. Uh, Phil Foden got himself a goal as well. Um, Phil Foden, you know, a lot of talk about him pre-match you know, from a lot of people, you know, who were completely baffled as to why he's not starting in the England team um, these last few games. Uh, he's obviously started yesterday, but again, in that position where he's obviously played him, you know, he played on the right-hand side this time. He has played, I think, mostly for Manchester City on the left-hand side, which is quite funny, but he is someone who can obviously float across that, um, you know, attacking three and also can play in behind the striker. But I just think that Southgate, the kind of threats that Foden does possess, he's a floater. You know, he's not, Saka's more of a winger, so to speak, a winger who can cut in, as opposed to, as I say, Foden is more of that floater type. So, of course, he's going to have, he clearly prefers to have his wingers just 
you know, winging. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like he wants them to, you know, genuinely just be wingers. So, you know, who can who are able to obviously cut in. So I feel like that was probably one of his decisions. And obviously one of the main talking points before the game was this man here, which was Jordan Henderson. Now they <laughs> had a decent game, but by sofa scores rating, um, got himself a 7.3. Uh feel like he played pretty de- and you know, I was one of the ones who if I'm being honest, I didn't really want to see him start the game because I do think, and it kind of, the game panned out in that way anyway. Um, I felt like he is, I don't want to say, I don't like using the term negative player, but it is almost that in terms of, because of how he's going to be used for England, you know, because he's going to be used in that kind of role of, you know, your, you know, we heard him on the pitch yesterday, you know, last night you know, shouting, you can, you know, he's the captain, uh, Captain. he's the, almost the manager on the pitch, you know, marshalling players and stuff like that. Like I said, you can hear him bellowing from, God, and I was thinking, blimey, you know, he must be really shouting if I can hear him, you know, through the TV, <laughs> you know, and inside a state, of, you know, a relatively packed stadium. So having Henderson on the pitch, we saw, look, Played sent he played um right central midfield, you know, the same position he takes up for Liverpool. Um, and you can see he was on that right hand side, he was almost acting at times as a right midfielder or what, yeah, a, a wide midfielder, you know, um, at times, you know, with Bellingham and um Declan Rice just kind of in the middle as a two. Um, maybe because again, he occupies that space for Liverpool. It's something that he's very, very familiar with. It's something that he's comfortable with. So for Gareth Southgate, he probably felt like that was probably the best option. Also to, you know, kind of mix things uh, mix things around a little bit against Wales. It's a derby. It's going to be one of those gritty games. Wales are going to be up for it and things like that. Having someone like Henderson on the pitch, you know, for um, not really even, I feel, for his footballing ability, just more so for, as I say, it's almost that manager on the pitch ability um, that he possesses, <clears throat> as much as obviously we we may laugh and things like that, that's something that he does quite well. He's very good at the marshalling, you know. He's very good at getting um, Bellingham. I think said it after the game, you know. He he gets everyone up for it, you know. He he will shout everyone to press and you know things like that. And you can hear him when someone makes a tackle, you know. He's the first one, you know, shouting yes, and you know all of these kind of metrics that can't really be, would I say, judged so to speak, because they're not really that, you know, that kind of, um, that kind of metric. But ultimately, he did have him in there. If we take a look at um, England's average positions, you know, on the pitch, as I said, you know, Carl Walker and uh, Jordan Henderson were kind of occupying the same space on that right hand side. Um, It's kind of weird. When I was looking at the average positions, I I felt like this was interesting because you can see that Marcus Rashford was coming in quite a lot. You know, we had Stones and Maguire who were sitting um, really, really deep with the fullbacks pushed um, pushed high up the pitch. Obviously, inevitably so, because we're going to England are going to be on the attack a lot more. Um, but Marcus Rashford was playing really, really like, you know, quite central at times, um, to be honest with you, you know, starting out on the wing, but he's a player who loves to cut in anyway. You know, he, that, that's his, that's his move, cut in, shoot, cut in, shoot, you know, that, that, that's his kind of, that's his kind of game, to be honest with you. Foden, again, look at points, to be honest with you, if you look here on the, on the map itself, he's higher than Harry Kane, you know, and. I felt like that's probably what England were missing in that USA game. And hence the reason why I think a lot of people wanted to see Foden on the pitch is because he can get beyond the striker. You know, he's someone who can, you know, when needed someone to kind of make those runs, you know, in certain points, he's the guy, you know, uh, who's able to do that. And he's able to do that really, really well. You know, got himself a goal through a Harry Kane assist. And I felt like if you're going to have Harry Kane dropping really, really deep at times, which he was, you know, there were times where, Kane was picking up the ball in defensive midfield positions, you know, you know, floating around. He, he, I feel like he's almost got like a free role within the team because of how he plays. You know, he's the guy almost in the attack who's the conductor in the attack. You know, he allows players like your Rashfords, your Sterlings, your Sackers, your Fodens, your Grealishes. He allows those guys to make those runs so that he can then pick them out. And <clears throat> if he does drop deep, sometimes defenders might not be they might be a little bit confused as to, you know, what they should do, you know, how they should do it um, in terms of do they follow him? Do they just sit back? If they sit back, then it means he'll be free and someone from the midfield then has to pick him up. And it, and again, 
interesting then looking at Wells's kind of average positions. They just look like they were dragged all over the place, to be honest with you. You know, you still got the four at the back, but, you know, not as I say with Bale yet again, you know, he's look at where he is. Look at where his average position is. You know, it, it's in that position. He's almost, you know, next to the centre backs, you, you know, kind, uh, kind of thing. And then they only really had Keeper more, you know, kind of near. You, you know, yeah, near England centre backs. Dan James obviously was probably their outlet, which I felt would make a lot more sense because of his pace. If they were able to get players like Joe Allen on the ball, maybe a bit more, who could maybe pick out a pass in that midfield, then possibly, you know, um, someone like a Dan James might be best served. Um, Aaron Ramsey, you know, wasn't really a good game by him, um, to be honest with you. You know, he's Ever since he left Arsenal, if I'm being honest, you know, he's just kind of, you know, the tailored off when Juve, um, Rangers and stuff like that. You know, he's kind of just tailored off. And to be honest, uh, as an overall, it was it was fairly comfortable for England. Um, this is a group whereby I felt like, you know, it was a group that England, most people think England probably should have got that nine points um, out of nine. Um USA game, in my opinion, I always felt like that was going to be the trickiest game, obviously, that they would have. USA have obviously gone through as well, and they'll face the Netherlands while England face Senegal. Um, and I think that's how the group was always going to pan out, Iran finishing in third. Um, but it is it is just a... Obviously, going into the going into the, into the next game, and, you know, I'll, I'll sit down and do a proper preview, you know, for it uh, heading into that game. But when, when England are going into that game, it's going to be very interesting as to who Gareth Southgate is going to play, especially in, in that midfield and, and in the attacking positions, because he's going to have a bit of a conundrum, if I'm being honest with you. If we look at Harry Kane, um, not Harry Kane, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, if we look at... Um, Harry Kane's positioning. Once we once we um, kind of see with Kane and his positioning, you know, on the pitch, as I said, he's someone who kept dropping deep. He's someone who would pick up the balls in areas which would then allow for those attackers to be able to get forward. He's someone who I felt like we criticise him because you know there were moments in that, especially in that first half, where you just felt like. Kane needs to be in the box. You know, there were times when Foden would get the ball out wide or Rashford would get the ball out wide and we need him in the box because you're supposedly the focal point of that attack. You're someone that we need to try and get on the ball on the end of things. And he wasn't there. He would drop to the edge of the box. And I guess that's just his game. Ultimately, that, that's just been his game ever since Mourinho kind of came in and coached him. That's just been his game where he preferred to just drop off as opposed to really break his neck and, you know, get in there. It's not to say he can't do it because he can do it. He's proven that, you know, over the years that he is someone who's able to do that. But, you know, maybe Gareth and, you know, Antonio Conte, they, they've kind of, you know, thought to themselves, Kane is a better passer of the ball than most players on the pitch at the time. Um, so it will be best served if he's the one who's um, dropping in and picking out those passes for a son, Kulis FC, or uh, uh, Raheem Sterling or uh, Fode and Saka and, you know, and things like that. And I felt like, yet again, for the attack, Kane's becoming fairly important and he's not scoring any goals, which is which is very, very funny. You know, if he goes to, you know, the whole tournament, you know, and doesn't get that, doesn't get, you know, that many goals, if any at all, then it's going to it's going to be very, very interesting because he's getting himself assist at the end of the day. He's the one who's, you know, putting the balls in for a Foden, for example, as we saw with the goal. You know, he's the one who, in that first game, he's the one who's setting up, you know, your sackers. You know, it, it, it is quite an interesting thing with a Harry Kane as to maybe in this tournament, especially now as well, England have made it through to the next round. He's kind of thought to himself, you know what, I think it's better if I become more of the creator as opposed to the guy who's on the end scoring things. And England do have do have the players on the, on the wings to be able to score goals. You know, Saka, Sterling, you know, Foden, the Rashford, those guys can come in and score you a goal. When we um, look here, um, another thing that I did find um, kind of interesting, obviously, uh, uh, um, Trent Alexander-Arnold uh, obviously coming on finally for his first minutes, um, you know, in this tournament. And when we look, obviously, Trent, this was his position when he came on. I think he played about half an hour, give or take. And um, you can see, look, Trent barely got up the field. Trent barely got up the field. It was almost like 
what he's been recently doing for Liverpool, which is we need you to kind of stay back a little bit. And this is this is when you see things like this, this is this is what I talk about in regards to why Trent won't really be picked is because what he's good at, he's not really been producing that to hit the best of his ability. You know, he'll probably tell you himself, to be honest with you. And I think he has alluded to that at times this season. You know, with the you know, with Liverpool not really being in good form and you know, some of the players being, you know, well off form and things like that. But when you do look at Trent, if his main game, as I said, is going forward, then unfortunately in this case, they if he's gonna play in the as you can see with the heat map where he's behind the halfway line basically for the majority of the game and he had Henderson sitting in front of him, ultimately then you don't need a Trent on the pitch. You, you know, he's not going to offer you anything because his best work is further up the pitch. That's where Trent, yes, he can ping a ball, but we don't need, we, you know, England don't need anybody to ping a ball. You know, that's not how they how they like to build up. Liverpool need that because they like to do the long ball game, you know, because they want to do those long balls and switch play and things like that. And I think Jerry, you know, alluded to that in the stream. If that's what England needed, then they would play a Trent Alexander-Arnold because he'd be the best at doing that. England don't require that. And if they don't require it, then they won't require Trent Alexander-Arnold. And then what his best attributes are, we then don't need that, you know, on the pitch. And I think that is the reason why. And as I say, look, you, you look at him here playing in that position where he's kind of the just a right back, you know, uh, you know, the, the position he actually isn't as opposed to being a right wing back, for example, then. You know, he's not going to get himself many minutes, you know, throughout this tournament. Again, like I said, barring injury or anything like that, he's not really going to, you know, see many minutes. But I've just found it interesting when Trent was on the pitch and Henderson was on um, um, was playing alongside him. Henderson was just sitting in front of him, you know, and I think Gareth Southgate purposely did that, as I say, because he knows that if Trent is on the pitch, Henderson is probably the better player to be able to understand his game a little bit. And also, as I said, with Henderson's, um, kind of on pitch managerial abilities and you know coaching and stuff like that he's probably able to tame someone like a Trent Alexander-Arnold so you know it, it is it is going to be one of those things it's, it's going to be something that's going to be inevitably talked about you know throughout this tournament especially if England don't win it you know they're going to speak about this regardless you know Trent and Foden how much are they going to play how much should they play would a different manager do it differently you know um it's just difference of opinion, man. It's just difference of opinion. I, I think I've just kind of come to terms now, especially with someone like Gareth Southgate, where I've kind of just said, ultimately, uh, you know, us as fans of football, whether you're an England fan or not, but just us as fans of football, what can you possibly say to a Gareth Southgate, a manager who's done better than most managers, if not all managers, in the last, what, 20 years? He's gotten to a semi-final of the World Cup. He's gotten to a final of the Euros. Name me another manager who's done that. You know, I think, was it, I um, uh, can't remember who the last manager was who got England to a, a semi-final of a major um, competition. Um, maybe was it Terry Venables, potentially? I, I might be wrong um, with that, so apologies if so. But I think there was only one other manager who's done that. And if that's the case, then who are we to tell Gareth Southgate? You know, and I think that's the position that we that I'm, I'm personally finding myself in at this current moment in time, is that if that is the case, then there isn't much more that can be said you know his tactics his way whether we like him whether we think he's wrong whether we think he's gotten certain things wrong whether we think he's done it accident whatever it may be it's irrelevant because his way is clearly working for this England team this his managerial abilities is clearly working for this England team because it's able to get us through in these tournaments and ultimately fin England finished top of the group you know no um no defeats only conceded two goals against um uh Iran in that first game and by that point you know the game was already won no goals conceded against USA no goals are conceded against Wales I believe England are the top scorers in the tournament um you know it, it's <laughs> when you look at it when you look at it like that and you and you and you you know, you know if you strip away everything and you just look at the facts that are there there's not really much more that we can potentially say on Gareth Southgate so I think now Southgate's heading into that phase where, yes, in terms of the style of play, like I said, it took until about the 50th minute until England scored. And I felt like it was that same pragmatic style. And against the Wales team, I felt like what was the need in that? But you saw as soon as England just kind of switched, boom, straight away, it was right. 
passing was was really really good you know was moving the ball a lot quicker Henderson was threading that ball in you know um as much as he possibly could um Jude Bellingham a lot of talk about him as well he's been okay if I'm being honest I haven't been too impressed with him in this tournament um so to speak uh had a good first game but after that Wales non uh, USA non-existent against Wales it was okay he, he did a job he did he did a job he didn't play poorly or anything like that he just did a job um in that kind of midfield but I felt like there were other players who were playing a lot better you know than he was so like I say it's going to be very interesting you know we saw Calvin Phillips come on for his first minutes of the tournament as well you know is he going to potentially play a bit more of a, a role you know in that team does Henderson keep his place for the next game like I say Gareth Safi has got a lot of a lot of thinking to do for that next game. Senegal are going to provide a different type of threat than a Wales, a USA or Iran. You know, Senegal are a very strong, pacey team, you know, who can hit you on the counter because they've got that pace. Is that something that England are going to be worried about? Maybe not. But at the same time, it might be something that they inevitably going to need to think about, you know, set pieces and things like that. It, it, it's going to be it, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, but ultimately, as I said, um, the three goals coming from the Manchester, the Manchester area pains me to say it, but you know that they, they, they played, they both played well. Rashford, um, particularly, um, and they deserve the they deserve the three 0 win. Um, go through in high spirits. Um, like I think I believe the game is on Sunday, so like I say, over these next few days, barring any injuries, um, I think Gareth Southgate might already have an idea as to who he wants to you know, play in that England team. Will we see Carl Walker staying at right back? Will Kieran Trippier come back in? Maybe, maybe not. Is um, They've got Saar on that left-hand side who likes to drift out there as well. Um, uh, and Dye likes to, you know, uh, Dye likes to uh, drift out there to that side. Will he maybe think, maybe I need someone with a tad bit more pace? You know, in the midfield, we're going to need to be able to control that. Is Does that then mean you either drop Bellingham or you play all three like he did against Wales? Like it's so many questions, so many questions, and it's like I say, this this is going to be um, one of the bigger tests for Gareth Southgate, you know, in this tournament. But he's shown previously that he's been able to get through these kind of tests. So maybe we should just start as a nation, we should just start, you know, trusting him, you know, a lot more. And you never know, and um, potentially what could happen. But look, guys, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for uh, those who watched this back. That is the World Cup group stages done for England um we'll obviously um I'll obviously be back um for the preview to the Senegal game uh, taking a look at their threats um and how England might be able to you know counter those threats and what Senegal can actually pose as I say before guys make sure you're liking make sure you're subscribing make sure you're sharing this out we are on the road to 150 man let's try and get there let's try and push um all this kind of content out you know, let's let's take a little look at certain different things. If you guys haven't seen um, um, any of my other previous videos where I talk about, you know, Pedri and Gavi for Spain, uh, make sure you go and check that out. Um, little just insight into the way that I felt that they were playing, um, especially in that first game, but just them as a general sense. Um, but yeah, guys, look, you know what time it is. It's G. Inevitably, I'm out. <laughs>